Welcome back to Basic Electronics. In the last lecture, we were looking at a simple BJT circuit which can be used as an amplifier. The gain of that amplifier is determined by the slope of the VO versus VI curve. We will now see how this gain is affected by the various parameters, that is, the resistances and the transistor beta. After that, we will look at the effect of DC bias on the collector current waveform when a sinusoidal base to emitter voltage is applied. We will look at a simple scheme to bias the transistor at a specific value of the collector current. Ok, let us start. Let's look at the same circuit in some more detail. Here are the choices for RC, 0.5K or 1K or 2K. For RB, 1K or 5K or 10K and beta can be 50 or 100 or 200 and uh, if the transistor is in the linear region VO is then given by VCC minus IC RC and uh, IC is beta times IB in the linear region so we get RC times beta times IB here and IB is approximately VI minus 0.7 because VBE is approximately 0.7 divided by RB and uh, this is a straight line in the VI VO plane because VI comes uh, with a constant coefficient here. What are the limits of this uh, equation, the validity of this equation? First when VI is less than 0.7 the transistor is in the cutoff mode so this equation is not valid. And when VO becomes uh, VCE sat or 0.2 volts, then this equation uh, ceases to be valid. So those are the limits. Between those two limits, the transistor is in the linear region and we can use this equation. Let us now compute the VO versus VI and uh, other quantities. And uh, these are the graphs. So that is VO versus VI. It looks familiar we have seen that in the last uh, slide. These other uh, quantities we did not uh, see explicitly so let us uh, look at these now. What about IC? IC versus V in. It is 0 in the beginning because the transistor is in the cutoff region when VI is less than uh, 0.7 volts. Then the transistor enters the linear region all of this and that is described approximately by uh, this equation and so IC keeps increasing at some point VCC minus ICRC becomes equal to 0.2 and that is the point where the transistor enters saturation and that is uh, here and after that this uh, VCE really does not change too much it remains uh, between 0 and 0 0.2 volts and therefore IC remains approximately constant. What is that constant in this case? It is 5 volts minus let us say 0.2 volts, 4.8 volts divided by RC. RC is 1K, so about 4.8 milliamps. And uh, that is what uh, this is. This is uh, 2 milliamps, 4 milliamps, so that is nearly 5 milliamps or 4.8 milliamps. Let us look at uh, VBE versus uh, VIN now. In the beginning the transistor is off, we are now in this region or this region here where the transistor is in cutoff and VI and VB are the same so therefore VBE is equal to VI and that is just a straight line with a slope of 1 passing through the origin so that is what that is and uh, at this point the transistor enters uh, the linear region, the base emitter junction is sufficiently powered biased. So this voltage drop is going to be something like 0 0.6 to uh, 0 0.75 volts once the transistor starts conducting. So that is what we uh, see over here and eventually when the transistor enters uh, the saturation region the base emitter uh, junction remains under powered bias and therefore VBE uh, is still 0 0.7 or uh, thereabouts. What is this uh, voltage here? This is uh, 1 volt, so 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. 0 
0.8 so that's something like 0.7 uh, volts what about uh, vbc vbc is the forward bias on the base collector junction in the beginning the transistor is in the cutoff region vb is equal to vi because this voltage drop is zero and uh, vc is pulled up to vcc because there is no ic rc drop over here so vbc is then vi minus vcc so that is again a straight line with a slope of uh, one that part there at this point which is the same as uh, this point here or this point here the transistor turns on and enters the linear region and now for vo we have this equation vb will not change too much uh, beyond this point uh, it will stay at about 0 0.7 volts and therefore vbc will start rising and that is because this voltage is falling this voltage is constant so therefore uh, vbc will start rising and that is what is uh, seen over here finally when the transistor enters uh, saturation at that point the base emitter sorry the base collector junction is sufficiently forward biased and that is happening at about this point here so this is 1 volt so that is about 0.6 volts and subsequently uh, with further increase in vi the base collector junction remains uh, forward biased throughout here let us start the animation now pause we are now in the cutoff region the collector current is zero if the collector current is zero vo gets pulled up to vcc that is what we see here the base collector junction is under reverse bias vbc is uh, between minus 5 and minus 4 and uh, vbe is positive but uh, it is not sufficiently large to make the diode make the base emitter diode forward biased and therefore the collector current is still very small let's continue and now we have entered the linear region in the linear region the collector current has started rising and because of that this voltage drop has uh, increased and therefore vo has become smaller vo which is vcc minus ic rc has become smaller and that is what we see over here vbc is still less than 0.7 in fact it's negative at this point and the base collector junction is therefore uh, still under reverse bias vbe is now something like 0.6 to 0.7 volts and that is uh, large enough to give rise to uh, substantial ic and uh, that is what we observe here let us uh, continue at this point we enter the saturation region vo has become equal to vce sat because the transistor has entered uh, saturation vce sat is like 0.2 volts or smaller and that is what we see here ic has reached its maximum value and that is 5 volts minus about 0.2 volts divided by rc which is 1k so that is uh, about 4.8 milliamps the base collector junction is now under forward bias because vbc has become something like 0.6 uh, volts the base emitter junction continues to be in forward bias and beyond this point things are not really going to change except for the input voltage what happens to the extra uh, voltage this is increasing this is constant so the extra voltage gets dropped across rb so things really don't change after this point 
let us now look at the effect of uh, rc rb and beta on uh, these curves for example if we change rc from 1 to 0.5 what do we expect will this part change that uh, will not change because that depends only on the on voltage of the base emitter diode how about this part even that will not change because that is simply vce sat for the transistor so what will change is this part here the one that corresponds to uh, the linear region and uh, that is because we have rc here in the equation uh, for that region so rc controls the slope of the vo versus vi characteristics it's uh, beta times rc by rb so if we make rc smaller the slope will become smaller note that it is still negative so this variation will become less uh, steep so let us see if that happens like that and uh, correspondingly these other uh, curves also uh, will change let us now look at the effect of rb for example if we change rb from 5k to 10k what would happen let's uh, look at this equation again the slope depends on rb beta rc by rb with a minus sign and if rb is uh, doubled from 5k to 10k the slope will then become halved so the once again this region will become less steep than it is now and uh, let's check that out it does and uh, correspondingly of course the other curves will also change what about beta suppose we change beta from 50 to 100 let's look at this equation once again so the slope goes directly as beta so if beta has increased the slope will increase so therefore this uh, region will now become more steep and uh, let's check that out it has become more steep and uh, there is a corresponding change in all of these other plots as well this circuit by the way is also called a bjt inverter this uh, term inverter comes from uh, digital logic and what it means is the in if the input voltage is low the output voltage is high and if the out input voltage is high then the output voltage is low and that is exactly what this circuit is doing and that's why it's also a bjt inverter it's also an amplifier because in this region there's a small change in vi then there is a large change in vo and that's why it's an amplifier as well we will look at uh, that in more detail soon For this circuit to uh, function as an amplifier, what we need is a large enough gain which is given by dVo dVi that is the slope of this VO versus Vi curve and it is clear that uh, the slope is maximum somewhere here in magnitude since vo is nearly constant for vi less than 0 0.7 volts and that happens because of cutoff and also vo is nearly constant for vi greater than 1.3 volts and this 1.3 volts of course is specific to uh, this example with some given values of rc rb and vcc in these two regions the circuit will not work as an amplifier because the slope here as well as the slope here is nearly zero 
so it is not really useful for amplification further to get a large swing in vo without distortion the dc bias of vi should be at the center of the amplifying region so this is the amplifying region where we have a good uh, large enough slope dbo dvi and we now are saying that we should not only operate in this region but we should operate uh, somewhere at the center of this uh, region and uh, this point will become more clear in the next slide here are the vi and vo uh, graphs which explain how amplification happens in this uh, circuit the same circuit as the one in the last uh, slide what is the input voltage uh, waveform here there is a dc component of uh, about 1 volt so we are applying an input voltage which is centered around this 1 volt the input voltage is going, going to go like that with time the amplitude of the input voltage is from 1 to 1.05 that is 50 millivolts and the peak to peak value of the input voltage is 100 millivolts or 0.1 volt what about the output voltage here is the output voltage the first thing we notice about the output voltage is that it is out of phase with vi there is a phase difference of 180 degrees uh, between vi and vo and that is uh, easy to understand as vi increases vo decreases and uh, that is why dvo dt dvi is negative and that is reflecting basically in this phase relationship between vo and vi what about the amplitude of uh, vo let's look at the peak to peak voltage here is roughly 2.4 to 3.4 so it's about uh, 1 volt slightly less and so therefore we see that there is a gain of 1 volt divided by 0.1 volt or about 10 a little less than 10 and that is uh, what we mean by amplification let us now consider another uh, dc or bias uh, value for the input voltage and that is given by this line a here and uh, what we are going to do is apply an input voltage which varies about this point and then see what the output voltage looks like so that is the input voltage now this dc bias which is uh, 0.75 volts corresponds to this uh, line A here that is 0.75 volts there apart from that the input voltage in this case is the same as the input voltage in the earlier case the B case the amplitude is still the same so it's uh, 0.1 volt or 100 millivolts peak to peak all that has changed is the dc bias here for the input voltage and uh, as a result the output voltage looks like this it is distorted and uh, it's easy to see why the why the distortion is happening let's look at uh, this uh, line a if you go to the right of uh, line a that is increasing vi we see that the picture is different than if we go to the left of a in this case in the earlier case we had the same gain in both directions and uh, now the picture is completely different if we go to the right there is some gain and if we go to the left the gain is much smaller the derivative here is uh, much smaller and that is reflecting basically in this distortion this situation is uh, definitely not desirable and therefore we will not uh, uh, operate the amplifier at this uh, dc bias 
Let us consider another bias point, the one given by this line C here and uh, we are going to apply an input voltage which goes around that bias point like that and let us see the input and output waveforms now. That is the input voltage centered around 1.3 volts which is uh, this value here and the amplitude is still the same it is uh, 1.25 to 1.35 peak to peak so 0.1 volts peak to peak or 100 millivolts peak to peak and uh, as a result the output voltage is again highly distorted and it's easy to see where that is coming from the left side of c uh, is now quite different than the right side of uh, C. Here we have some reasonable gain, here the gain is very small and that is where the distortion is coming from. So the point to take home is that bias point is extremely important in uh, BJT amplifiers. In fact, that is true about amplifiers based on any devices, uh, whether it is a MOSFET or a JFET or a BJT. The circuit file for uh, this example is available to you. Uh, you can uh, check out these results. Uh, you can also change parameter values and see what happens. So here are the key challenges in realizing uh, this BJT amplifier in practice. One, adjusting the input DC bias to ensure that the BJT remains in the linear active region with a certain bias value of VBE or IC and uh, we saw that that corresponds to uh, a bias value which is in approximately the center of this uh, region here. That is one challenge. So we have to apply an AC voltage which is riding on a DC value which is approximately at the center of uh, this region. How do we ensure that? That is one challenge. Second, mixing the input DC bias with the signal voltage. So we have uh, two components to the input uh, voltage. One is this uh, DC bias which we want uh, to be at the center of this region and on top of that we want to have the input voltage. How do you uh, mix these two input uh, components DC and AC? or DC and signal in general. The first issue adjusting the DC bias of the input voltage is addressed by using a suitable biasing scheme and we will see uh, some of the biasing schemes. And the second issue of mixing the input uh, DC component and the signal is achieved by using coupling capacitors and we will also take a look at that. Let us consider this uh, simple biasing scheme shown in this uh, circuit. Biasing means selection of component values RB and RC here for a certain DC value of IC. And as we have seen earlier that is equivalent to setting up a certain DC value of VBE, the base emitter voltage. For example, a DC value of uh, 2 milliamps for IC may correspond to a VBE value of 0.672 for example. And uh, let us remember that no signal is applied at this stage, so the signal is 0. And uh, the solution of this circuit will only give us the DC or bias values. And we will worry about how the signal is going to be mixed uh, later. Now equivalently, we may bias uh, an amplifier for a certain DC value of VCE, this voltage VCE. And uh, why can we do that? Because IC and VC are related. For example, in this circuit, VCE plus 
ICRC is equal to VCC and so therefore there is a relationship between VCE and IC. So sometimes instead of uh, insisting on a certain value of IC we might say that uh, VCE should be uh, a certain voltage. As an example let RC be 1K and let uh, the transistor have a beta of uh, 100. With these conditions let us calculate RB the resistance here for IC equal to 3.3 milliamps and we will assume the BJD to be operating in the active mode and of course we need to uh, come back and check whether that condition is indeed satisfied. <coughs> Simple calculation if we know IB if we know IC we also know IB IC divided by beta 3.3 milliamps by 100 33 microamps and what is IB is this current and that is 15 volts minus VBE divided by RB. So that is 15 minus 0.7 divided by RB. So we have an equation now uh, for RB using this number we can calculate RB. So RB turns out to be 430 kilo ohms. So if we have uh, Rb equal to 430 kilo ohms and with Rc equal to 1k uh, and the transistor uh, beta equal to 100, we can expect the collector current to be 3.3 milliamps. Is the transistor indeed operating in the active mode with this uh, with these component values? That's easy to check. Let us uh, calculate VC. VCC is 15 volts. ICRC is 3.3 times 1, so 3.3 volts. So VC is 15 minus 3.3, around 12 volts. VB is about 0.7. So this is uh, a P region. P region is at uh, 0.7 volts, N region is at 12 volts or thereabouts. Therefore, definitely this uh, BC and base collector junction is reverse biased and the transistor is indeed operating in the linear region. Let us uh, summarize with RB equal to 430K, which we computed in the last uh, slide. We expect IC to be 3.3 milliamps. If the transistor beta is 100. Now it turns out that this uh, if here is a big if. Let us see why. In practice there is a substantial variation in the beta value even for the same transistor type such as uh, BC107. The manufacturer may specify the nominal value of beta as uh, 100 but the actual value could be 150 for example there is a wide variation possible and that has to do with the manufacturing process for the BJT. So with this very wide uh, variation in beta, can we still trust our numbers? Let us check. With beta equal to 150, the actual IC is beta times IB which is VCC minus VBE by RB and that is 150 times 15 minus 0.7 by 430 K. We have already picked this RB assuming that our beta is 100 but the actual beta of this transistor happens to be 150 and the current then would be uh, that expression or 5 milliamps. Now this current is significantly different obviously than the intended value which is 3.3 milliamps. So we designed the circuit for a collector current of 3.3 milliamp but when we hook it up we might find that the collector current is 5 milliamp because the transistor beta is not what we expected it to be. So this is a problem, a uh, very uh, relevant problem in practice. And uh, certainly we need a biasing scheme which is not so sensitive to the beta value. To summarize, 
we have seen that the DC bias is very important for a BJT amplifier to work properly. We looked at a simple biasing scheme and observed its limitations. In the next class, we will look at an improved biasing scheme. See you in the next class.